I'd like to call to order the June 12th meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee. Uh, and to get started, I'd like to call forward Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit or whatever staff uh, will be uh, presenting today. Um, we have heard from the other Building and Contracts Committee members who aren't here at the moment. Uh, Mr. Stewart and Mr. Yulfelder will not be here. And Ms. Causey is on her way. And um, there is uh, significant interest in item number one by the board. And I would ask if we could start with item number two uh, and finish up with item one so when Ms. Causey gets here that we would uh, be able to discuss it as a committee. Could I ask for one privilege to um, introduce my colleagues with one couple? couple of quick comments. Certainly. Right. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening. I wanted to let you know that we have given you in your weekly update and at your tables two pieces of information that the first one, is, they're both information that you have had in February, which was in the presentation um, by myself and Margaret Ann Howie on procurement authority. So you have that again at your seats as well as the executive summary that went later to it. As we were looking at the contract exhibit specifically for this month, all the contracts, there was such a variety of contract authority included in the decisions that we are facing you today, we thought it might be useful for you to have that reminder with you as you go through approving the contract. So again, it's just for your information, it's not new information, but because there was such a variety today, we thought it might be of assistance to board members. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So going to item two, JBO 73118, International Baccalaureate Program. This is a new contract to provide for the expansion of the International Baccalaureate, or IB, program for primary years, middle years, diploma programs, and the establishment of career programs, all including professional development as well. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2,294,120. And I would just mention to Ms. Hen that this um, contract was presented to the Curriculum Committee in May and we had quite a few comments and discussion at that time with the Curriculum Committee, but if you have some other thoughts or questions, you can present them now. Thank you, I do, thank you. Um, with regards to the IB primary years program and the middle years program, do they culminate in some um, identification or distinction like the IB degree? So I'm gonna ask Mr. Level? Imbriali to come forward to answer those instructional questions. Hi, Ms. Hen. Hi. Uh, the primary years program and the middle years programs do not. Okay, can you speak to the value in the primary and middle years program? So uh, the first piece around that is the whole concept of a continuum. So um, uh, unlike, for example, uh, an AP course, which is a course, the IB program uh, proposed in this contract has a continuum that can run from K through 12, the primary, the middle years, and then, and then uh, culminating a diploma program, which can offer either college credit or you could graduate with an IB diploma. Um, and universities will accept, like they do AP credit, IB credit, or they'll accept the IB diploma, which offers um, typically even more for those students entering the college program. At the primary years programs and the middle year programs, uh, what happens is we take our existing curriculum mm -hmm. here in Baltimore County, and then we look at it from a global perspective, and then we wrap in opportunity for inquiry-based learning. Great, thank you. I'm not as familiar with the primary middle, so I appreciate that. And with this expansion, would there be opportunities for students to complete that entire IB pathway from primary through High school with they, they could and because IB. in the in the proposal well, in the in the schools that are part of the programs, there's an opportunity on the east side and the west side. So they could theoretically complete. They could those. theoretically complete the full program. Yes. Great. And the spending authority requested is 2.2 million. Do we know the breakdown between the programs of the allocations of those costs? I don't have Primary. the specifics of the breakdown of costs, but the costs include everything from, uh, all the schools have to go through an application process. Mm -hmm. So there's an application fee. Uh, there's candidacy fees. So schools are first 
candidates for the IB program, and then they become world IB uh, designated schools. So that's the next step. There's a yearly fee that's associated with that designation. And then all teachers in any of the programs, primary, middle, or the diploma program, uh, go through professional learning uh, through the um, International Baccalaureate program itself. Okay. And the information we were given states that the middle years program would be um, added to Kenwood and Newtown high schools. Is that? Right. So. Um, the, the nuance there is that uh, the International Baccalaureate program considers middle years through grade 10. So the middle years program is six through 10, so it includes our middle schools, and then when students transition to the high schools, it's grades nine and 10, and then at that point, students can choose whether or not to continue into the diploma program, which is grades 11 and 12. Gotcha, thank you for clarifying. Sure. That's all I had. And um, Ms. Hen, um, much of the curriculum committee had the same um, more familiarity with the high school program, IB programs in the middle school. So everybody kind of went through the same type of thought process and questioning uh, in the curriculum committee also. Well, thank you for allowing me the okay. time to Thanks. ask those questions. Thank you, Mr. Brawley. All right. So item three, KSH 360-18. Mathematics Supplemental Intervention Materials. This is a new contract for Mathematics Supplemental Intervention Materials and Professional Development for Staff. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $600,000. Any uh, questions from uh, other committee members uh, on this particular contract? Uh, yes, Ms. Causey. Thank you. I was just wondering if you would go through the uh, process just briefly of the um, selection process and, and the reasoning behind adding this as a new contract. Well, the selection process is consistent with uh, state laws regarding curriculum, seven, Article 7-106, as well as board policy 6000 Two, and I'll let Ms. Shea elaborate. Sure, thank you. Um, so this actually dates back all the way to an RFI in 2016, in which our LEA participated along with 18 other LEAs in Maryland. Um, we had over 100 educators representing general ed, special ed, ESOL, um, community members, Title I, et cetera. Um, at that time, they went through, um, I want to say, over 50 different intervention resources um, until they narrowed specific products um, to come to the recommendations. What then took place, the reason that the second part of your question about the new contract, two of these products had been a part of other contracts. So one was a part of summer school materials that were purchased by the Title I office. Um, that's the do the math and do the math now um, for Marilyn Burns. And then the moving with math um, was also um, purchased as part of the summer school as well. And so the third one, the box of facts, that's a new product that we did have in pilot in some of our schools this year, um, which was part of the intervention presentation we did with curriculum committee um, this past winter. And so um, the, the first contract expired as of June. The other one had expired as part of an old summer school contract. So this is an opportunity for us to bring all the math intervention resources together so that schools have a menu to choose from to support their students that are struggling with mathematics and need those additional resources. So when will the um, schools begin to use them? You said that it some of it was related to a summer school contract that's So th the materials would be able to be used as the first week of school. I mean, this would be for next school year. Some schools have already been familiar with these materials because they have them in the building from having previously been used in summer school. Okay, so you don't, so they're not going to be in time for this year's summer school, but they're for Correct, the they are not a part of the summer school program um, as outlined by Title I. Okay, and then how, how much of these materials are textbooks or, um, Yep, so the majority of the resources are print materials. Um, I'll start with the box of facts because that's entirely print. The do the math and do the math now and the moving with math 
are primarily print resources. There is a digital component where the students have access to digital manipulatives as an additional resource, and um, those vendors have shared the data privacy agreement. However, because that's not the primary use of the resources, we are just starting the integration process because the majority of the materials are print. So the instructional materials, the materials the students would use and teachers would use on a regular basis are print, um, but there is an option to have these digital supports as students need them. So we did have the data sharing agreement signed, but have not integrated yet until we use those pieces. Okay, and then did you speak to moving with math? Mm -hmm. So moving with math was also part of a pre um, previous summer school contract. This is particularly um, part of the ask is our ESOL office wants to use this to support our English learners. Um, it's available in both English and Spanish and also focuses on a movement based, which is really helpful for our, um, in particular, lots of students, a variety of students, but in particular, um, our ESOL office is looking to use this to support our English learners with math. Sounds great, thank you very much. Yep. Ms. Kazi, I would say uh, too, I, I, I appreciate your question about the procurement process because we did talk quite a bit about the academic back uh, benefits and the reasoning academically behind the uh, math intervention products. And I think it is appropriate for this committee to talk about the process so that we're not, we're not really doing the same thing over and I, I appreciate the question, so thank you. Yes. Ms. Hen, did you have anything on this one? Thank okay, you. we're good now, Mr. Saras. Thank you. Next item, JBO 71218, web based college and career counseling tool. This is a new competitively bid contract for a web based college and career counseling tool for the Office of School Counseling. Approval is requested for a five year contract with a five year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,954,702. Yeah, well, this is a fabulous tool. I'm personally familiar with it. I just have one question, and that is will parents have access to it with this license? Uh, I'll have to defer to uh, Dr. Wistead on that. Yeah. So yes, that answer is yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Parents will have access to it. Fantastic. Thank you. That's all I had. Ms. Causey. And I just wanted to clarify, the terms are five years with an extension of five years and the spending authority is 1954 So is that spending authority just for the original five years or is it for the five years plus the five year extension? That's for the full 10 years. Okay. Um, because that would be quite an increase in the an average annual expenditures. Yeah. In fact, it's, is it It double? still is an increase. Okay, and, and can you speak to why the increase? Are we using it in more schools? Uh, middle schools were not in the initial uh, rollout. The annual subscription price has gone from about 141,000 to 188,000, and basically it's the result of unit price increases over the five-year term since we last uh, obtained the product. Um, we have found that the per pupil rates are comparable with our neighboring LEAs. With the neighboring LEAs in terms of purchasing this product or a different product? No, this product for this purpose. Okay, great. And like Mrs. Hen, um, I've seen my children use this to great success and heard from their peers and um, staff. So thank you for bringing this forward. And again, I'll add our student member, Josie, who was on the curriculum committee. She was very vocal during that meeting and very supportive, <laughs> just like Ms. Hen. So uh, we did get her support too. So that's good. Yes, thank you. Okay. So our next item, JMI 612-18. Instructional uh, textbooks and instructional materials. Uh, this is a new contract for the replacement and replenishment of textbooks and related curriculum materials for schools and offices. Approval is requested for a five year contract with 15 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $4 million. Any questions, committee members? Ms. 
Kazi. Thank you. So in this contract summary in front of us, it says that the purchases may be processed through the BCPS online catalog, eSchool Mall, or by purchase order. So is the purchase order going to a different um, the, a different the, process, or it would go directly to one of the re recommended yes, awardees? it would go to one of these recommended bidders. <sighs> okay. Well, there's several large different bidders is is there a um, an understanding of what the breakdown is going to be amongst them or is that these really are all school by school decision? these are all materials that have been previously reviewed by the curriculum committee approved by the board and in most cases initially rolled out by curriculum offices and this is primarily for the replacement and replenishment of these approved items by individual schools as because they are responsible for the maintaining the original inventory due to enrollment loss damage um, with their own school budgets okay so it's not that they're specifically new textbooks that will be rolled out these are just replacements for Correct. what the schools are currently using in the school by school decision to decide whether their books need to be replaced or whether they're in good condition correct is that correct yeah. okay thank you thank you um, a related question to mrs. Causey's question and that is are any of these textbooks um, being used to supplement digital curricula that are currently in place in other words, um, for students who are not using a text currently, are we adding textbooks um, to the instructional materials that are available to them? I think I will need Ms. Shea's assistance on that. I want to be like Dr. Wistad and say yes. <laughs> so the short answer is yes in that, but the um, qualifiers, no new textbooks show up in the school. We still have to follow the same process for any new adoptions. But for example, um, let's take the science curriculum. So the NGSS science curriculum, we use some digital resources for that. But there are um, textbooks that were purchased previously under 6002 that are in this contract that schools might purchase for the use of a student who's using that to supplement that curriculum. So in addition, for example, a common one you might be familiar with is the Wonders materials in elementary. So those materials show up in here because they've already been through the entire process. So as schools need to replace or purchase additional copies, they would use this contract for that. Thank you. Some sure. of the feedback I've gotten from community members has to do with math, um, math. materials mm -hmm. and the lack of a textbook mm -hmm. in their courses has been a source of frustration for some parents who are trying to assist and are and don't not have able access. to do so with um, strictly only the digital curriculum. So my question has to do with, are we adding any textbooks as resources um, for math, math specifically? So we do add print materials for that case, and we do have in many cases the um, contracts that have come forward have included class sets of print materials. So we don't, we have not typically purchased one print and one digital for every student, um, but we do have print materials that supplement. And so that feedback has been shared. Um, I know Dr. Staley is here. Um, in the audience, and so we have talked about other ways to support our parents and um, family members with additional um, to support that. So in this eSchool Mall are previous math textbooks um, that can be used. They may not be the same, but they would support that content um, that students are working on. Okay, I would reiterate that feedback, and based on that sure. would support increasing the purchasing authority to provide textbooks, particularly for math and secondary levels. Okay, so thank you that for that. Feedback. I appreciate that. Thank you. Ms. Causey. Just to dovetail with Mrs. Hen, I have heard also from um, students and parents and also some mm -hmm. teachers that uh, in the past when we've purchased new um, instructional materials that sometimes we've only purchased five, per, five textbooks per classroom and that that's not, um, that in some cases that that's not sufficient. My question, so I'm glad that we're moving to an opportunity for the schools to buy more if they are if they need it my question is when these schools make the decisions to buy this does that come out of their their school specific budget or is there a larger 
uh, central office budget from which those costs would come. So I want to make sure that I don't conflate two different conversations. Mm -hmm. So first I want to circle back. We would not purchase five for a classroom. We do purchase class sets. So I understand sometimes the teacher experience is different um, because they may only receive five, so I'm not negating that that might be their feedback something that we continue to talk about. Um, but when we purchase materials, we would purchase print class sets by teacher. So there is sometimes a change if schools, for example, change the number of teachers and we weren't aware, and then those 30 get split between two teachers, it might result in something like that. Um, so when we purchase print materials, um, we would do class sets and then individual digital. Um, if we do central purchases, so as Ms. Hen mentioned, moving forward as we adopt something, having that in mind, that would come from central textbook whenever we have a new curriculum purchase. This particular contract is um, if, for example, the, I'll go back to the wonders or a novel, or it could be a business textbook. If we've done the initial rollout from central textbook and then two years down the road, George misplaces his textbook at his high school and is charged with replacing it, schools would use this contract to replace that material and that would come out of school budget because they would be charged from recouping that from the student George. Does that clarify? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> yes, Ms. Hen. To follow up on that yes. then, will we, we be replenishing known missing materials or known quantities that, that are needed? In other words. So um, I, in terms of enrollment growth, we do handle that centrally as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when we know about that, um, and we do often have schools, you know, we're all in this together. So I do sometimes have department chairs or schools that will reach out and say, this is what I need, and we work to support them on that. Um, we are not in the habit of just continually purchasing the same things over and over again um, to re for replacement because we're trying to be fiscally responsible. Um, but we do support schools in um, enrollment growth. So if we know, for example, in some of our elementary schools, as we open new elementary schools, that's something separate that we handle. Um, when we communicate with schools that they have added a teacher and they're going to have a whole new class, we do support them in that way centrally. And I appreciate your comment about fiscal responsibility. We're However, trying. this is one area where I'd, I'd caution to advise excess is not necessarily a bad problem to have if it means students are not without texts. All right. Sure. All right. Thank you. I think uh, we need to keep moving forward and we can discuss further in the full board if there are remaining questions to answer. So thank you, Ms. Shea. Our that. next item, MWE 81618, Evaluation Services for the Magnet Schools Assistance Program Grant. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide the re required external evaluation services for the Magnet Schools Assistance Program Grant for the Offices of Educational Options and Magnet Programs. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $454,174. And we'll note the grant is the source of the funding here, right? Correct. Correct. The yeah. grant requires that we obtain the services of a third party evaluator. Great. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Quasi? So, does this replace the company that we used in the past, Magnet Schools of America, that was out of Florida? Uh, well, I don't know. We've used different Magnet, you know, we had a contract assist us with the task force. I'm not sure. This is for the evaluation. Thank okay. you. All right. All right. We can keep going, Mr. Saris. Okay. Uh, the next item, JMI 611-18, Professional Development for Teachers and School Leaders. This is a new competitively bid contract for which proposals were solicited to provide professional development and coaching to teachers and principals. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $3 million, all of which is grant funded. All right, any, que any questions on this? All right, Mr. Saris, we can keep going. Uh, the next item is KSH 355-18, Catering Services for New Teacher Orientation. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide catering services for the new teacher orientation meetings scheduled from August 13th through August 16th 
of 2018, approval is requested for a one-time purchase and contract spending authority of $27,000. All right, we're good. And there are about 1,000 teachers participate in that, I see. That's yes. quite a bit. Thank you. Uh, next item, KSH 359-18, Excess Workers' Compensation Insurance. This is a new cooperative contract uh, with Carroll County government to provide uh, excess workers' compensation insurance for the Office of Human Resources Operations. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with the option to extend for two one-year periods with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1.8 million. Any questions uh, on this? Ms. Causey? Mr. Sarris, does a contract of this type uh, fall under the policy where we're supposed to do a vendor performance evaluation for over $500,000? Um, let me ask Ms. Webster. Um, on insurance premiums, I don't know the answer to that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, this would fall under. I'll echo with the, Yes, this would fall under that. And we will be doing a, a uh, performance evaluation. And was one done in the past? Because I see that there were um, $581,000 of compensation insurance premiums. That contract is coming to an end, and we will be doing the performance evaluation as it ends. And is that submitted directly to the board, or do we have to request that? That is not submitted directly to the board. OK, I would request that we, the board would receive a copy of that, please. And with this uh, additional contract that the spending authority is $1,800,000 for one year, will the uh, performance report be done after $500,000 worth of expenditures, or would you wait until $1,800,000 is spent? I believe the, perform the vendor performance evaluation policy is currently in review, and we will follow the new policy once it's completed. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Sarris. Next item, MBU 508-17, purchase of floor care machines and associated equipment. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Quaker City Paper Company to Rubin Industrial Company Incorporated doing business uh, as Lewis Industrial Supply. There are 11 other award bidders on the original contract approved by the board on January 10, 2017, and there's no change in spending authority. Okay, Mr. Sarris. Uh, MWE 818-18, lease of office space. This is a new contract under cooperative administration of programs for leased office space at the community college of Baltimore County Randallstown campus. Approval is requested for a four-year, two-month contract and contract spending authority of $350,000. Any questions on this one? Ms. Causey? I was just curious, uh, quickly, how many students and or uh, teachers will be utilizing that space? Uh, there you go. So we have, um, in terms of staff that are at that Welcome Center, um, next year we will have five full-time staff that use that facility, and that will include the secretary, the registrar, um, the PPW, we have a bilingual people personnel worker there, and then um, based on our people for our people and our superintendent's budget, we are now gonna have a social worker and a nurse to staff the Esau Family Center. In terms of students, um, this past year we served over 1,500 students that came through the Welcome Center. That's great, great yep. progress. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Next contract, MBU 516-18, is for demolition of old Colgate Elementary School and preparation of site to house the new school. All right. I think we're good with that one. The next contract is 
M W E eight seventeen eight dash eighteen is for transfer of property. I'd just like to provide some background information for the board. The existing site at Honeygo Element Elementary School was owned by county, and it was designated as program <coughs> open space land. The the use of program open space land is restricted generally only for the recreation purposes. County has agreed to give us the land and work with DNR as part of the process to take the designation of uh, program open space out. And when we do that process, we have to offer a similar site in a close area close to that site, <coughs> which is what this process is all about. Um, the site that we have offered uh, or the county has offered on our behalf is the Overly site that is cu currently used for a nature trail for the community as it is undeveloped green space which is fully forested. The Overly site is kind of landlocked and is not good for school purposes so we are offering that site <coughs> as an exchange for this site for the change of designation to program open space. Um, the purpose of this contract is for a board to accept the ownership of Honeygo Elementary School site, uh, formerly known as Joppa Road Parcel. Also request that the county accept the ownership of the Overly Middle School site. And then finally, the POS restriction from Honeygo Elementary School property to be transferred to the Overly Middle School property. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, last item is the uh, ARA 22518 Educational Facilities Master Plan and Comprehensive Maintenance Plan. Good evening. Good evening. Um, quickly, I will go over this, and I'm joined by uh, Dr. Brown. This is an item that comes to you guys regularly as we get through the process of our capital plan. Um, it's come to you on the um, as as an exhibit f as far back as early as 2011, 2012. So that's why you see it here. It sort of looks out of place, but this is the process that we've used for almost the last 10 years. This is. Um, uh, the process it relates to the submission of our capital plan and the um, educational facilities master plan and the comprehensive maintenance plan. These two plans um, further support the capital plan that this board has voted on and we've gone through the process. This is the final step as it relates to making sure that that process going, is going appropriately. This plan has been revised a few times and, work, and Dr. Brown will give you more details there. Um, we're bringing it to you today for your approval in order to meet the deadline, in order to continue our process for our CIP work that's been voted on. So with that, we'll take any questions and Dr. Brown will give you a little oversight as it relates to what's the pieces and parts of it. You you have it, it was included in your packet. It's a lot of material um, that, this, that the state requires, the state planning department requires as, as the supporting documentation for our capital plan. So some of those plans are related to um, uh, enrollment, adjacencies, um, conditions, um, a host of things. So it's just the administrative portion of that process. Dr. Brown. Everything he said. <laughs> <laughs> um, in all seriousness, this is the supporting documentation for the CIP. It is an administrative document. It is a compliance document that we complete every year. Um, we do it in conjunction with the, the, the county. They, they write a portion of this document as well. Uh, so it is consistent with county planning a, as well. Um, but it is a compliance document and supports the current CIP. All right. I know uh, Ms. Hen had a has a question, certainly. I did. I was going to ask you, Mr. Smith, what is the deadline for submitting uh, it's, this? It's it normally July? the 1st of July, but because of how it falls, it's on the 2nd of July. So, okay. yeah, they know that we're, we, we have it ready to go. It's an electronic file that we send to them, and then we have to send them four hard copies as well. Okay, so the board would need to take action on this tonight yes, in order to meet that Yes, ma'am, in order deadline. to continue the capital program as we have submitted it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You got it. Ms. Causey. Um, I would just like to ask, the EFMP um, developed related to the 
replacement schools of Towson High School and Delaney High School that have been on the CIP for nine months. Microphone. Thank you. Um, how is the EFMP uh, reflected given Towson High School and Delaney High School being on the CIP? Go ahead, Peter. In terms of uh, timing and funding and your workload related to those projects? All that EFMP has indicated that we are doing a high school study and that the board has uh, requested inclusion or has approved the inclusion of those high schools as part of the last year's capital plan. I do want to say that this EFMP is the prerequisite for the next year's capital improvement program. Mm -hmm. no. No, it, this EFMP supports the current CIP. Both Towson and Delaney are mentioned in the document. Yeah. Uh, the supporting information is, is there at the time being. Uh, both were submitted for planning dollars uh, as part of the CIP. And again, to, to echo uh, Pete's position, that does not preclude uh, their inclusion in the, in the coming CIP. This, again, is, is the background paperwork that supports what the existing say? CIP. Right. And how is the SAGE policy group, the work that they're doing with the high school study, at what time frame and in what manner is it going to affect modification of the EFMP? The EFMP, again, is consistently a support document for the CIP. So <coughs> subsequent to the inclusion of projects in the CIP, um, then the EFMP will be modified to support those projects. Uh, SAGE should be done with their study and have recommendations to the board in the latter part of this year. Okay, and then just recently the board voted to um, reject a renovation contract for Lansdowne and add them to, as a replacement school. So how was that reflected in the EFMP? It should be included in there, and if it is not included, we are in continuous conversation with the state. They are aware of the fact that Lansdowne contract has not been approved by the board. Correct. Okay, is that something between this meeting and the next meeting? You can check can on check the that. language yeah. of Lansdowne. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You can do that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have one more contract. Yes, we. Okay, just wanted to it's because it, we skipped the first one, and we're going to go back to the. Um, Thank you. First item. So the first item, NWE 838-15, Elementary Language Arts Intervention Materials. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for the continued implementation of the level literacy intervention program. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $3.78 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $5.28 million with one awarded vendor previously approved by the board on August 9, 2016 and Ms. Shea would like to provide some background material relative to the uh, comments you've received from the public. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saris. I appreciate the opportunity to provide some clarification because I understand there was some misunderstanding around the intent of this um, and also how it relates to other interventions and um, professional learning programs that I have brought forward both myself and in collaboration with special education. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is, as you know, we're very committed to our students who have dyslexia and students who struggle in the area of phonics and decoding. And this in no way takes away from our mission and vision around supporting those students um, we continue to expand our professional learning opportunities with Orton Gillingham training. Next year, in partnership with special education, we're going to be offering training for all reading specialists in elementary school. Um, recently, we brought forward, and you thankfully approved, a contract for Just Words, which is Orton Gillingham based structured literacy approach for students with um, deficits in the area of decoding. 
But what I want to clarify is there are students who strive as readers who do not have deficits in the area of decoding. And so one of the things that I am proud about is that we have done a much better job of in, um, investing in screening tools and have trained teachers in the elementary and middle and high schools around how to screen students with reading difficulty to ensure that we don't try a one-size-fits-all approach, that we don't just give every student that has reading difficulty the same response, which, as you know from hearing from many of our dyslexic dyslexia advocates is the mistake that we had made in years past for students with dyslexia. So when we do these screeners, students usually fall into one of two main camps, and it's much more nuanced than that, but in the interest of time, we essentially have students who have decoding deficits, and we have students who have mastered the code. They can decode words, but they struggle in the areas of fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. The level literacy intervention is an evidence-based resource that supports these students. It is not appropriate for students with dyslexia or students who who need structured literacy approach, and we would not support students being placed in that intervention. But we do have students, after we've screened them, that demonstrate they have the decoding skills intact, but they need additional support in the areas of fluency, comprehension, and to some degree, the process of putting it all together. And so I wanted to first explain the difference between those two programs. This particular modification, in further clarification, is not about expanding the purchase of intervention kits. And I'm going to go back to your comments earlier, Ms. Hen, about not skimping on the books. This is about flooding first grade classrooms with level text so that students who are working in any intervention have an opportunity to practice. What we know about learning to read is that students need multiple opportunities to read in a variety of text. Um, these leveled libraries are in alignment so that students who are in LLI who are working on a particular um, theme or a comprehension skill can have that opportunity for repeated practice, but they are just that. They are level libraries. The only expansion proposed is in um, secondary schools. This board has asked us to um, look at lots of different interventions when we talk about secondary reading. And so for next year, we are piloting different interventions in a number of middle and high schools for secondary reading. Again, only for students. All students that have decoding needs will receive that with the Just Words contract that you approved recently and that we have been training middle and high school teachers on. So this modification allows for us to purchase those level libraries for first grade classrooms um, and then to also purchase the materials we need for piloting. The reason the spending authority goes further than that is pending the results of that pilot. Because the length of the contract would continue, we wanted to have spending authority so, so that should that pilot prove successful, we would be able to then purchase those materials for our middle and high schools as needed. Um, yeah, and before I open it up for questions, I did want to say thank you very much for that explanation because um, I really felt that uh, BCPS and those advocates for dyslexic students had a great partnership they and do. it did uh, bring me great pause when many of them express some concern and I think your explanation here this evening helped me and as well as some other stakeholders. Well and I would like to say thank you for that. Um, I did speak with two of the members of Decoding Dyslexia, Liz Hemley and Carlene Spatulnik, um, yesterday and today to have the same conversation um, and they both assured me that they felt much better after having that clarification um, and I also ensured that next time they should see something and, and that was my responsibility. I should have had the foresight to talk to them ahead of time um, because I think seeing it on board docs without that context maybe concerns some people. Um, so we talked about what I could do to be more proactive in the future, but I did speak with both of them and both of them assured me that they felt the same way um, because I too am very proud of that partnership mm -hmm. and that collaboration both with ELA and special ed and with our community partners as well. Thank you very much. Ms. Kwasi. Thank you. And thank you very much for that explanation and for reaching out to our stakeholders because, sure. as you know, the board received a number of emails and phone calls, um, and we want to make sure that we're taking care of all of our struggling of readers and providing the intervention. So I appreciate that. Um, the w question that I had um, from the explanation is, as we are doing this increased screening that you mentioned, what is the percentage of, how are you keeping track of the percentage of struggling readers with dyslexia or decoding issues versus um, others that are fluency and comprehension so that we can be sure that we're allocating the supports and the dollars 
relative to the percentage of what we're finding. Sure, and I'm smiling because we had a conversation about two hours ago around this, just this issue, um, Dr. Adams and I, along with some members of our staff. Um, so one of the things that we've been talking with, um, in particular the Office of Special Education, because as you know, sometimes they're all under a broad umbrella, and it's hard for us to discern. So what we've been doing um, with our middle schools most recently, um, as I mentioned, we had this decoding survey to help us identify students that need decoding versus don't. We then followed up and have had individual meetings at schools to help schools group students and put them in the class as needed based on that data. And so then this is an opportunity for us to then centrally collect that same data school by school um, so that we can start to discern those patterns and be sure that not only our material support but that our professional learning support matches that. We had not previously centrally collected data that was that specific, um, but we as well have talked about how that is additional information that helps us better serve our strategy readers Thank you. right because when one considers the um, expenditures one million five hundred thousand increasing to um, five million two hundred eighty thousand and we reflect on the Orton Gillingham training which is around the two hundred thousand mark so there's a big disparity in the dollars and what is the relative need in terms of the number of students and the number of teachers so I'm glad that you're collecting that and I would look forward for, to the board receiving that absolutely thank you yep and committee members, so that we can try to stay on our agenda time, if there are any items that you want to specifically move forward without a recommendation, we can separate them. Uh, but we still will have some opportunity during the general meeting to uh, to dig further if we need to. Um, are there any items that any of you would like to separate, or can we vote on the whole block uh, in terms of uh, our building and contracts committee, uh, Ms. Kwasi? I would like to separate the... Um Number one, just because I know other right. board members will have uh, questions about that, and also the EFMP. All right. So, uh, committee members, uh, can we have a motion to accept items 2 through 11 uh, to recommend them to the full board? So moved. So, Ms. Causey, can you second that one, I guess? Um, actually, if we can remove <laughs> the professional development for teachers and school leaders. What number so is that? That would be three. Seven. One, seven, and EFMP, which is JMI 6, well, 11, 18. Right. So that would be two through six and eight through 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you support that, Ms. Causey? Um, yes, and actually the transfer of property. All right, let's do them uh, one at a time then. <laughs> it's only four. Okay. Okay. All right. It's, it's, so may, if you make a motion for me, because I'm, I'm losing track of the numbers. Well, the numbers don't have well, we, the We're going to move correct. them all forward with a recommendation, except one, the ones that Ms. Causey, there were 1, 7, 12. Thir 13, I believe. 1, 7, 13, and 14 will be separated. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And there are no opposed, and we'll move the f other ones forward without recommendation. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. That uh, ends our meeting. Thank you, staff, for your information and comments. Thank you.